Let me borrow on Blue Six again. Talk about the application layer of networking for CCNA. Um, don't forget the TCP IP model have four layer: the application, the network, the internet, and the transport layer, or the the OSI model, which is more of a layout rather than just network for the whole thing. And it's new. Has application, presentation, session, transport, internet, network, data link, and physical layer. Application layer and physical layer are going to be the two closest one I have to say because you need the physical object and then the application. Application layer consists of you going to the application to receive the option of it. There's peer to peer setup, which is basically a form of protocol that does not have a dedicated server, a server which hosts information on it. That's what a server is. That's how you get on it from servers. You can make your own server, but it's not going to be an Apple video. But peer to peer application is nothing more than from me to you, I pull a file from you. That's peer to peer. The protocol, if I remember correctly, between 22 and 23, that's the port. Protocols are ports, the number it activate on the universal standards of internet work, networking. And it doesn't have a dedicated server. It's not really protected. You use FTP mostly. It's, it's a unified datagram protocol, meaning it is... It's, Take priority for reliability, but doesn't have a dropout or checksum process or the ability to recycle the process back. Make sure you got the information is very vulnerable as well. Now, there's a pill to peer application, which is <coughs> this is instant messaging, not text messaging, but our own application that have a text message. Those require a form of service in the background of the object. Just for the cuts, you gotta get it. And then there's the section that deal with the of the application layer. This is our application. Don't, now, TCP, IP have application layer. <coughs> what the OSI model have application, presentation, and session. Both models, one model have application, while other model have three. These are three on the OSI is equal to TCP, IP model. <coughs> Application model have a certain amount of protocols, the presentation have a certain amount of protocols, and the session has a certain amount of protocols. Simply put, a presentation is just uh, presenting how information will be laid out, while the session is what holds the information in between y'all and how the information is going to go back to between y'all, while the transport, transport the information and determine the pathway for it to take. The application is just starting the process off for those. Now, the ports for application layer is pretty lot, especially if you're just using TCP IP model. And the application layer does the domain name server, which is the DNS. That right there is giving an IP address a name or assigning a name to it. Now, in the host configuration, which is dynamic host control protocol that assign the IP address dynamically, meaning it is automatic. If you do it statically, I mean you gave it an IP address. Now, there's the boot P, which is how your IP address is booted on a server or booted between peer to peer or client, which is also part of host configuration. And then there's the emails or transfer of messages between email. There's the the main thing is simple message transfer protocol, which stands over POP, which is Pulse Office protocol, POP Office protocol, whatever. And then there's an instant message application protocol. POP has a file where it you can manually get in and delete it out, but that's if you set it up. If you're like a small organization, then instant message application protocol will. Retain information in the server. It's email based service, basically. Simple message transfer protocol stands above those because you need SMTP for POP and SMTP for IMAP. This is my personal experience. It won't say it in the notes, but you know. 
Then there's files transfer. These are just transfer of files or data packets. There's FTP, which is protocol, I don't know, 22, then there's, or 24, 26, or 28, it was one of And that's where you use peer-to-peer -peer or stuff like Guntella, which is like BitTorrent. Like you're gonna do it in copyright, so you can probably transfer between each other or someone else just for that. Then there's two step or telekinetic or freaking transfer travel protocol, which is bigger than the FTP, and it's more of a higher protocols. It's used TCP as a protocol standard, where it's more secure than that. And then as a web browser. There was HTTP, which is Hypertext Transfer Protocol, and then there was HTTPS, which is a secure version. You can enter these manually what I like doing, which is Hypertext Transfer Protocol Secure. The HTTP is 80 port, and then there's HTTPS is 443 port. Port is when you go on your firewall and set up. Port is basically a standard that has been designed as a Unity as of now. You can make your own port, if you, especially if you're doing your own stuff starting from scratch, but you won't be able to get on the internet because due to how the internet is set up, base to recognize those ports because of Linux or Unix. It was one of those. Now, and uh, when you get a web browser open, you use a URL, which is the link to your address. The link could be www.whatever you want to go to. That's the uniform resource locator. That locator will use a process known as git, where it was then transferred from you to where the router, modem, and switch all the way to the server you want to go to. That server can be a dedicated HTTP, HTTP server or a universal server. Once you use that process of git, because you're sending the request into that server, that server will use a git process, will end up adding a dynamic host control process. Dynamic host control protocol, which is the IP address signed by the ISP or your own one. And then that process we then use git and then that domain name, the domain name server will end up using a put process where it will put the order into that server where it transform the name into an IP address where that server will pick up on it. And then it will use a post where it will send it back to you. And then we reverse everything I just said. Yeah, let's keep it simple. That's how HTTP work. It's just a web browser mostly. Then there's another section where it's the instant message application protocol. Now, don't forget that instant message application protocol is still a part of SMTP. Now, POP is not part of IMP. POP is part of SMTP. SMTP can stand alone if you want to. In the instant message protocol, it can save itself on the server, or you can save it on the server you want to, and the information is stayed in that server as emails. Now, unless the email server themselves decide to go in there and get it out, then that's one good night. Pop is another thing. It can stay in the server, but you mainly have to delete it. SMTP is, a, I think, if something that stays in the server, you may not I don't stay in the server at all, but you can still track it down. You know, stuff like that. That's all mostly application layer. <clears throat> application layer is more location of the port based on the country you're in. But like I said, port is just a standard when you go to your firewall or setting up your internet work hard. Sending stuff based on port in the command line. You doing stuff like that, you can designate which port you want to go to, like DMDZ or post for that post triggering or DMZ host triggering. That we can get better in there, acquired to your server, acquired as an upstream as a network administrator. You can set up network where you can subnet network to each to to your specific hosts, like 254, 256 hosts on per subnet network based on you want, and then like how many people you want on each network, and then we. And that way, if they buy a dedicated service, you can <coughs> dedicate speed towards each of those services. <coughs> this is how I know GCI is trolling me. I'm sorry, but we have bad. No, you can set speed specifically towards me or anywhere else in the frame, you know, metal finger. But like I said, as an port, you can 
for the application that you can set things up. For server wise, you can make your own server and set things up that way as well. Um, then there's service meshes block protocol where it is a client server request and then you can use um, almost on any available network. Service meshes block is the specific service you want for that specific block, aka.